It's an honor to introduce uh, our, our next guest, our, our presenter. I'm not going to do much in the way of introductions because he's got a life story that's pretty compelling and a message to share with you guys that I think is pretty dynamic. My good friend, John Rankin. What's up, seniors? How you guys doing? I want to hear it again, guys. How y'all doing? Y'all about to graduate. I mean, you guys got to be pretty stoked, right? I didn't hear what you said, but I like it. <laughs> no, hey, so my name is John Rankin, and uh, I'm, I'm excited to be here because I have an important message for all you guys. And in fact, this message is for every high school senior graduating in 2020 across the country. And I have my friend here, he's filming this uh, speech because I have a pretty compelling story like Coach said, but more importantly, you guys have an important story that I want you guys to know. And I'm here to help you guys begin to tell it because you're at an important moment in your life. You guys are about to graduate from high school. You guys are about to really begin, or at least you're gonna have the opportunity to really begin living your life. And I want you guys to take a moment to realize what that means. And I'm gonna share a little bit about my story to help enhance your understanding of what this moment really is for you guys. Just to let you guys know, actually I'm curious, how old do you guys think I am? Okay, okay. Guess what? Guess what? Okay, hold up. You guys are all correct. <laughs> now, I'm 38 years old. Okay? Now, the reason why I look like I'm 19 <laughs> is because I'm a distance runner and... <laughs> there we go. Now, the reason why I look so young is because I've been living my dreams my entire life. My entire life, I've been living my dreams. And the reason why I know that that is true and why I hope in many ways that is true for you and that I can help you to do more with the dreams that you have, the dreams that keep you up at night, the dreams that bother you, that you think about when you're sitting in the classroom and you're daydreaming, these things that come to you, they do not come to you by accident. They come to you because they're telling you who you are. And you have to start listening to them. And when I was five years old, believe it or not, I imagined this moment right now. This moment right here with you guys right now. I imagined this moment. And I, guys, I want you guys to understand something. Seriously, no, this ain't a joke, all right? I really guys want you guys to hear me. I'm, I, I could be anywhere in the world right now. I give speeches all over the world. I get paid pretty well to do it as well. But I'm here with you guys because I care about you guys. I care about your life. I have this saying, I don't have to know you to know your heart. And I know that every single person in the world truly is here for a reason. That they have something that comes to them that keeps them up at night. They have something that comes to them that they know they are here to do, but they miss out on it. They get caught up in life. They graduate from high school, they go to college, they get a job, they fall in love, they start working, they have kids, and, but they don't work on their dreams. They forget about it, they get caught up in life. And they miss out on that moment when they get to make a decision to actually do something about it. Now I don't know what that dream is for you guys, I don't know what it is that keeps you up at night and that bothers you, but whatever it is, it's not just your, an opportunity for you guys to make that dream come true. It is 100% your responsibility to make the, your dreams come true. Now, I know you guys know what's going on in the world. I know you guys hear a lot of stuff. You guys have phones. You guys are on social media. You guys hear what's going on because of the internet. We live in the information age. It's coming at you all the time. But if you're paying attention to what's really going on, we're seeing a lot of things falling apart in our world. And you guys are Generation Z. And your generation cares about making an impact in the world. You really do care. It's what matters to you most. You guys don't want to just get a job and go to work every day. 
I'm sure you guys have examples of that in your life where you see people going to work and they come home and they're miserable. They're not happy. You guys have a chance right now. You get the opportunity to make whatever it is that's in your head and whatever it is that's in your heart come true. And it is your responsibility to do that. And if you don't make that decision right now, you might be putting that dream off for years, maybe even for the rest of your life. You have to take a moment to realize that whatever it is that you guys want, I don't care whatever it is, it doesn't matter. If it makes you happy and it's gonna make the world a better place, you need to do it. You need to find a way to do it. And I guarantee you, you would do it for free because it makes you happy. But I promise you, if you pursue the things that make you happy, there will be an opportunity and there will be a way that will be unveiled to you to make a living doing what makes you happy. So I'm, gonna, I'm here right now. Today, my purpose, the reason why I'm here with you guys, for every high school senior, you need to know, and I want you to give yourself the permission to dream and to believe that the dreams that are coming to you, the goals that you have, the ideas that make you excited to get you out of bed, the things that when you think about it, you, you get giddy, you get, you get excited. You can't wait to try to work on it and to do it, and you'll do it no matter what. Whatever that is, I want you guys to give yourself the permission to work on that, to pursue that, to chase that. That's why I'm here. Now, when it comes to my personal story, I started out as a basketball player for, for about 10 to 11 years of my life, from the age of five to about 14, I was a basketball player. I wanted to be the next Michael Jordan, not that tall, <laughs> okay? And I can't jump that high. But what I was doing was chasing this dream that my father and my brother had, and I thought that that was what was gonna happen. I thought I'd go to a D1 school, I thought I'd make it to the NBA and I'd be making millions and millions of dollars playing basketball. But then I fell in love with the sport called track and field. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and the way that that happened for me was in 1996, the summer before I became a freshman, I was watching the 1996 Olympics and I was watching this guy named Michael Johnson. Oh. Right? <laughs> And he was wearing golden spikes. And he was breaking world records and he was running with his chest puffed out with the, the letters USA across his chest. And I was blown away. I said, oh my gosh, that's what I want to do. I want to I wanna do what this guy's doing. I, I wanted to feel the way that that guy looked. I wanted to feel amazing. I wanted to feel like Superman. And I said, what, whatever this guy's doing, that's what I'm going to do. So to my father's dismay, I, I, I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quit basketball. He's like, what? That doesn't make any sense. And I'm going to be a track and field athlete. And he said, wait a minute, you're going to wear short shorts? <laughs> I said, yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to run in circles and I'm going to do it really fast. Yeah. But you know, the thing that was surprising to my dad and to my friends and to everybody that knew me was I wanted to, I said, not just that I wanted to do track and field, but I said, I'm going to become an Olympian. And I said, not only that, I said, I'm going to win the Olympic gold medal. I said, not only that, I'm going to be the greatest miler this ever lived. <clears throat> and they all looked at me like I was crazy. And I was. I was crazy for my dreams. And I was crazy to believe that this thing that everybody says is pretty much almost more impossible than winning the lottery, because not only does, does the lottery require luck, but Olympics, you gotta have talent too. And I'm like, I've never ran before. So they're like, really, what are you talking about? How in the world are you gonna be able to do this? But at the age of 14, I quit basketball. And that, that, honestly, I think probably as soon as the Olympics ended, I, all I had was basketball shorts and basketball shoes, and I didn't even know, I didn't live close to a track, but I lived next to my, uh, near my old elementary school, so I got, I, my mom said I started getting up every morning at seven o'clock. Nobody was coaching me, nobody was telling me what to do. All I knew was that I needed to get started. Just get started. Figure it out along the way, but you gotta go. You gotta get it going. So the moment I knew that that's what I wanted to do, I just went for it, I started doing it. 
Now the story gets good, guys, because even though I had no idea what I was doing, and I started out in the wrong stuff. I was wearing basketball shorts and basketball shoes, and I'm running around this dirt track for, who, I don't know, 30, 40, 50 minutes. I'm just running, and I'm saying, I'm just trying to figure it out as I go, but I said, I'm gonna chase this dream because it came to me, and it was the thing that woke me up every day and said, this is it. This is the vehicle to get to where you want, really wanna be in life. So I went for it. And throughout high school, I had these moments where I was really, of, of brilliance, where I was really, really good, and moments where I kind of sucked, you know? But I kept going because the dream, because I was true to it, it started becoming true to me. It started being true to me. So even when I struggled, even when I fell short, even when I, I failed in front of everybody, because everybody said, he's got this talent, I started showing really a lot of great promise. I, 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 went, I ran a 409 mile in high school. And I didn't know what I was doing. But I would tell everybody, I'm gonna be a sub four minute miler. I'm gonna be one of the fastest milers in US history. I wanna be one of the fastest African Americans ever. I'm gonna do all these things and I was failing. I was failing all the time. I was falling short all the time. But because I believed in the dream and because it made me happy, I was living a good life. And I was creating opportunities that I didn't even know were coming my way. My senior year, I was barely being recruited. Then all of a sudden, I had a breakthrough. And then all of a sudden, I was being recruited by UCLA, by the Naval Academy, by all these different great schools. And I said, oh my gosh, now I have an opportunity to get a scholarship and go to this A school of my dreams. And it's because I chose the right sport. I chose to listen to my dreams. Again, whatever it is that's bothering you, I guarantee you, these things that you feel like you have to do these things that you feel like would make you happy, you got to listen to it because the pursuit of your dreams are what's going to create a life that's going to make you happy. You may not have the dream come true, guys. I'm not here to lie to you. But I guarantee you, you will live a life full of meaning and full of happiness. And you will inspire others to do the same. You guys want to have an impact on the world? Do you guys want to have an impact on the world? Yes. Of course you do. I know you do. The only way that you can do that is by changing your world, is by living your dreams, is by doing the things that make you happy. Can you imagine, could you imagine if everybody in the world was doing that, what the world would really be like? I guarantee you the problems that we see today, the problems that you guys are going to inherit, you're going to inherit a lot of these problems that my generation and the, duration, and the generation before me was supposed to fix. And we messed up. We messed up. We didn't do a good enough job listening to our hearts and following our dreams. I need you guys to do that. I need you to do that because you're going to only see these problems that exist today get worse. And you guys don't have a lot of room for error. We didn't leave it for you. So now we have to come together now and we have to talk about what's really going to make the world a better place. And I guarantee you that if you are doing the things that make you happy, doing things for others as well. Me being here today, this is my dream. I wanna, I wanna spend time with you guys. I wanna hear and see you guys be successful. I want you to know that you matter. You need to hear it every day. Even if, even if you hear it sometimes, I'm happy to say it to you right now. Again, I don't know your heart. I don't know you, but I do know your heart. And I do know that you guys want to matter. I do know that you guys want to make a difference in the world. And so as I was chasing my dreams, I started seeing some things happening throughout my life. I started seeing all these opportunities come my way. I ended up choosing to go to UCLA. They didn't give me a scholarship. I walked on. And I was considered an underrated recruit. They were excited to have me, but they weren't expecting me to do much. 
They only had a limited amount of scholarships and I didn't get one of them. So I spent the next five years chasing greatness. I told everybody, why did you choose UCLA? I said, because it's a school for Olympians. I was focused. I knew that every decision that I made, when I started realizing what my dream was, and this was just one of the dreams that I had, I said, I gotta, this is the vehicle to get me to where I really want to be in my life. And I said, UCLA is gonna help me get there because whatever's there, it's gonna help me to understand who I am and what my purpose in life really is. And I struggled there too. My freshman year, I won a national title. And that was pretty awesome. The next three years, I experienced what's called stress fractures. I had seven of them. Seven stress fractures. For three years. Sophomore, junior, and senior year, my fourth year. I stayed for a fifth year. Luckily, I got the red shirt. So I had five years at UCLA. But three years out of the, out of the five, I was injured. Now that wreaked havoc on my heart and my mind because I kept telling myself, it ain't gonna happen. After stress fracture, after stress fracture, after stress fracture, I'm like, I, I, they looked at me and said, you're, you're done. Nobody, you know, nobody believed in me. I started hearing rumblings like, hey, this guy's, this guy's uh, washed up, he's not gonna make it. So I gave up. But my dream didn't give up on me. I tried to quit. But for some reason, it kept pulling me back in. And so I said, okay, my last year in college, I said, I'm going to look at it this way. I'm not gonna try to chase a dream. I'm not gonna pretend that things are gonna work out. I spent three years being injured, so of course it's not gonna work out. So I said, what I'm gonna do is go back to why I started. This is important for you guys to know. As you begin, and when you make that decision, and honestly, I don't know how many of you guys are listening. I don't know how many of you guys actually hear what I'm saying and it's resonating with you. Honestly, I think there's probably only one person in this room that's gonna walk away today and do what I'm telling them to do. And the rest, you're just gonna go and live that life that I'm afraid you're gonna live, which is just gonna get caught up in doing what everybody else does. Living a life, avoiding your dreams, avoiding failure, avoiding discovering who you really are, and avoiding making the impact that you really want to make in the world. The reason why I'm able to do what I'm doing right now and live the dreams that I've had my entire life is because I was always willing to fail. And I failed a lot at UCLA. I failed a lot. But when I remember why I started and why you guys need to know why you're going to start, if you haven't already started chasing your dreams, it's because you love it. That's the only reason why you're doing it. And because you love it, whatever it is, that thing you want to do, those things that you want to chase and, and make your life what you do every day, you have to realize that you're doing it because you love it first. Not because you want to make a lot of money, not because you want to be famous. None of those things matter. They really don't. Because once you get it, you realize it's not what you think it is. I've been in the magazines. I've been on TV in front of millions of people. I've done it. Don't mean nothing. It doesn't mean nothing. Because you go home, it's just you, and you gotta look in the mirror and, and deal with yourself after all that stuff when it's, when it's quiet, when nobody else is paying attention. It's all the stuff between those moments that really matters, guys. That's the stuff that matters. What are you doing with your life? How are you treating other people? How are you treating yourself? So when I struggled, and it wasn't working out, I was beating myself up all the time. I wasn't being very nice to myself. So I let it, go, let it all go. I gave it all up. And I said, I'll run, but I'm just gonna run because I believe in it and because I love it and it's fun. I don't care what happens. I don't care about the expectations. And then all of a sudden, I started running fast. I started winning races. And all of a sudden, I became the number one miler in the world. I broke four minutes. I was ranked number one in the world. Nike started calling, Reebok, Adidas. They wanted me to turn pro. Everybody was saying you can make an Olympic team. I thought it was over. But because I had the dream and I didn't give up on the dream, the dream didn't give up on me. I couldn't get away from it. It was pulling me back in. 
That's the greatest thing about what your dreams are gonna do for you. It's that other side of you that just won't let you give up. Because you started and you actually went for it, it will find a way with you. You're not alone. Your dreams are like these figments, these people, these things that are with you. You can't see them, but you can feel them. And they're in your heart and they're going to wake you up and remind you of why you're here. And they're waiting for you to start listening to them. They're waiting for you to start listening to them. Guys, I went on to make an Olympic team in 2008 as an alternate. I was named to the team in the 1500 meters. The most important thing about that moment was as I was running down the home stretch and I saw my parents sitting in the, in the stands. I saw my best friends, you know, some of them were in the stands, some of them were outside of the stadium. And there was millions of people watching and there was tens of thousands of people in the stands and we were the final race I remember coming down the home stretch, thinking to myself that the last 12 years of my life were the greatest 12 years of my life. Because all the struggles, all the fears, all the injuries, all the setbacks were for this one moment when I got to make my dream come true. And because I didn't give up, I got to make an Olympic team. Because I didn't give up, I got to now have something that I can give back to other people because I know that it's true. I know that it's true. And I remember seeing my parents, the look on their face when I crossed the finish line and after the race as well. I remember my father coming up to me and my mom was crying and my father looked at me and he said, I'm glad that you didn't listen to anybody that said you couldn't do it. I'm glad that you listened to your heart. You were right. You were right. To hear that from my dad, to know that he trusted me at, from the age of 14 to believe in myself enough to make that decision, to pursue this thing that everybody said was impossible, that I was right. And I know that you guys have those moments when you share something with somebody and they tell you you can't do it that it's impossible. If you have a dream and you've seen somebody else achieve it, then you already know that what they're telling you is not true because you've seen it happen in somebody else's life. You've seen it on TV. You've seen it somewhere. You've seen the example. You know that it is possible. So you can eliminate that fear or that doubt right now you know that it's possible. Guys, the biggest question I want you to ask today, to ask yourself today, is not whether or not you can do it. The question I want you guys to ask yourself today, and as you prepare to graduate, is why not me? Why not me? That's the question I want to ask yourself, guys, because your dreams are not coming to you by accident. They're coming to you because you are the one. The secret to my story that I don't talk about a lot was that right before the Olympic trials, guys, this is, this is the thing that I think makes it most interesting and why, again, as seniors, you need to know these things. I was diagnosed with a terminal kidney disease six months after I made my first Olympic team. I was told that I was halfway towards kidney failure about a month before the Olympic trials. I was told that I was dying. And I still went on to make that Olympic team. If that tells, doesn't tell you right now that it doesn't matter what comes your way, that it doesn't matter what obstacles are put in front of you, that if it's your destiny, that if it's your dream, that it is meant to be if you are willing to chase it, then I don't know what will. Now I'm very fortunate to have beaten that disease and to now be on a mission to tell others how I did it. 
A part of it was the way that I've lived my life. A part of it is an experimental stem cell treatment that I was able to have to overcome and treat this disease and to fight it. There's a lot more to learn about how that treatment has helped me, but for some reason, again, I was chosen. I'm the one, you know, to help. Right now, 38 million people in the United States have what I have, chronic kidney disease. And there are, there are thousands of people dying from this disease all the time because there is no cure. But for some reason, I got a treatment that has helped me beat this disease. And that's why I'm coming back. I, I thought I retired from the sport years ago. I'm not done. I'm gonna chase the Olympic dream still. I'm trying to qualify for the 2020 Olympics right now in the marathon. And I'm gonna keep going because I need you guys to know that 20 years ago, I was sitting in your seat. 20 years ago, I was in your position. And 20 years ago, I believed what I still believe today, that you guys are the future. And that me standing right here is really you standing right here. That this is your voice telling you that you matter and that you need to do whatever it is that's in your heart that compels you to live your life. Your life matters. I know some of you might be going through something. I know some of you might be afraid of the future. I know some of you might be thinking that it doesn't matter what you do. I'm telling you right now, it does. It does. I'm no different than any of you guys and yet I've traveled around the world. I was a professional track and field athlete. I've represented the United States and the Cayman Islands in international competition. I'm one of the greatest distance runners, middle distance runners in the United States history. And I'm, I was named the greatest distance, middle distance runner in UCLA history. UCLA is one of the greatest sports schools in the entire world. I was a walk-on. They didn't give me a scholarship. They didn't tell me I was gonna be great. I proved it to myself. I didn't need a scholarship to do that. Guys, you have everything that it's, that it's gonna take to achieve your dreams already with you right now. And I'm asking you to believe in yourself because it matters. Guys, I wish you guys all the best in your journey. And I want you to know that these three words on my chest, go be more. I'm gonna close with this. I came up with this idea based on the gingerbread man. And the story of that fairy tale, in my opinion, is, like, is an analogy for the life that we are all challenged to live. If you've heard the story, it's this, this little cookie that was born into a world with one purpose, according to the rest of the world, to be eaten, because he's just a cookie, but not to him. The moment the little old lady opens the oven, what does he do? He runs, he jumps out the window and he runs, and he runs down this path. I see that path as your path, and along that path, just like the gingerbread man, you guys are running, but do you know what you're running towards? He knew. He wanted to be more than a cookie. He didn't, want, he didn't want to just be born to be eaten. You guys are born into a world, we all are, that wants to tell us from the moment we're born, before we even say anything, before we even start walking, this is who you are, this is the life you're gonna live, and this is how it's gonna be. They don't know what's in your heart. They don't know what's meant for you, but you do. And when I read that story years ago, about 12, 13 years ago, I said, man, this little cookie is running down this path and then he runs into a pig that wants to eat him and a cow and a horse and a farmer and these characters are all chasing him but he keeps running past him. You guys remember what he says? You can't catch me. You can run, run as fast as you can, but you can't catch me because I'm the gingerbread man.
He knew who he was. And you guys know who you are. Every single character in that story represents an obstacle in your life, including the fox. He gets eaten at the end of that story. So it's kind of hard to build a, an apparel company and a brand where the character gets eaten, the superhero gets eaten. But I got to tell you, that fox represents my disease for me. And it stopped me for a while. But it didn't kill me. That gingerbread man didn't die that day in that story. He's still here and he's still going. We are the gingerbread man. We carry on that story. Our story hasn't ended. We know why we're here. Our path is leading us towards our dreams. You guys are capable of overcoming all the obstacles that come your way. I believe it. Again, my name is John Rankin. I am what the world is chasing, and I hope that I have inspired you guys today to chase your dreams and to become what the world is chasing too. Thank you. All right, can we give John another round of applause for his success story? Thank you, John. Really appreciate it. Yes, sir.